Hello friends, today is a bit of a different video. It is a sit down chat all about my diet and how it has evolved and changed over the years from my early teenage years to where I am now, a woman who is approaching 30. And there have been some ups and downs and some wild rides and some big mistakes along the way. And I thought maybe you guys would want to hear about it. So buckle up and let's wind back to when I was a teenage girl. So let's start when I was between the ages of like 12 and 18. So maybe 13 to 18, like teenage woman. What was my approach to food like? And my approach was very, very relaxed. I didn't really have any awareness of health and I didn't really care about health. So I was very lucky that when I was back at my parents' house in the evenings after school, my mum would cook me really nice, wholesome, home-cooked food, like meat and two veg vibes. It was always very, pretty much very healthy, like home-cooked cottage pie, home-cooked like fish, home-cooked wedges, and then peas and carrots, or, you know, basically like meat, to veg. That was my dinner at home every night. When I was at school, I'd usually have pasta for lunch and then my dessert would be like something chocolate with custard. So it wasn't really like a super balanced diet, but I wasn't really caring about what I was eating at that time. I feel very lucky that in my teenage years, I did not get sucked into crazy diet culture. I did not get sucked into the awful eating disorders that affect so many young women. I have never experienced an eating disorder. And in my school, I did see other people experience those at that age, but I personally never experienced an eating disorder or disordered eating patterns in my teenage years. In fact, I had absolutely nothing in my head about food. I literally would just come home from school and eat a full sharing pack of shortbread biscuits just because I fancied it. You know those shortbread fingers? God. I loved those. I ate a lot of shortbread fingers in my teenage years. That was like my revision fuel, like one of those sharing packs of shortbread fingers. I would just get up and smash a whole pack during my revision. So safe to say in my teenage years, health was not at the top of my priority list, but I also feel like it was just me focusing on other things in my life, like focusing on my friends, my education, just not really thinking about my diet or my exercise during that time of my life. And thank God for my mum feeding me some home cooked meals and getting some vegetables into me. Well done, Helen. Now let's move on to some more interesting years. Let's talk about the years from about 18 to 22, 23, AKA my university years. And I'd say that is when I made the vast majority, if not almost all of my food and diet um, mistakes and challenges that I underwent were in that four year period. I did a four year degree at the University of Sheffield and during those four years I went on a journey with what I was eating. I got into fitness. I started getting into fitness in my first year of uni. I got really into it in my second year but my first year is when I first started to delve in and I'd say that over the course of those years I just got sucked into all of the fitness misinformation. And I kind of believed that in order to be healthy, I had to have some sort of extreme diet. I couldn't just eat a normal, balanced, relaxed diet. I had to like have like some diet rules in my life in order for me to be fit and healthy and strong and to support my training. So I kind of just went in on everything. I started tracking all my macros, which is not a bad thing, but for me, it kind of led to me restricting foods because I felt like, oh, I should only be eating high protein. I remember on my MyFitnessPal, my protein goal was 180 grams a day. 180 grams a day. Madness. So much protein, guys. So much protein. I was obsessed with protein. And my meals would just be things like a chicken breast or a, fish or a fillet of salmon with like green vegetables. I never ever ate carbohydrates. I went super low carb. I think I almost went keto at one point during university. I had like this fear of carbohydrates. I was like, no, if I want to be lean and strong, it's pure protein, no carbs. And yeah, I completely cut out carbohydrates, went crazy high protein and kind of just avoided any bread, pasta, any carbohydrates. I just didn't really let myself have them, except alcohol, of course, because that's a big part of university experience. But besides that, it was just really all about macros, hitting my protein, carbs, and fats. And that was like super low carb, pretty low fat, and really high protein. And that was like my life at university. There wasn't really any focus on whole foods or getting in goodness. It was all about macros. It was all about counting what I was eating, reducing what I was eating and yeah, eating protein at all costs to anything else. Like who cares about eating whole grains and the benefits of whole grains? Screw that. I just want to eat 
another chicken breast. I mean, I feel like I just, it's a wonder I didn't turn into a chicken breast. I ate so many chicken breasts when I was at university. I was just, yeah, it's just one big human chicken. I ate a lot of chicken because it was like low fat, high protein, low carb. And that was basically what I wanted my diet to be at that time. And just disclaimer here, there's nothing wrong with having like a low carb diet and a high protein diet. But for me now, later on in life, you'll realize that doesn't really work for me. And I know, and I've now found a lifestyle that works for me, but I really wanted that to work. And I pushed myself into it and I wasn't feeling good. And I didn't really get much stronger. And I didn't really look any different, but I was obsessed with eating that way because I thought that was healthy. So I do feel like in those university years, I just became a little bit misguided and I wasn't listening to my body. I was just listening to external messages of what health was. And I actually don't think that was healthy for me and my personal life goals and body. Luckily, when I hit 22 forward slash 23 years old and I left university and moved to London, that is when all the diet rules kind of went out the window. Well, I'd say 80% of the diet rules went out the window. I stopped tracking my macros. I stopped like really worrying too much about what I was eating. I just started focusing on a more balanced diet. My life became super busy with work and trying to build this social media business I ended up doing that food just, I didn't really have time. I feel like at university, I had time to really obsess about macros and food and weighing my food and doing all that sort of stuff. Then I moved to London and I was like, I don't have time to be weighing my chicken breast right now. So I just stopped doing that and it actually was so liberating and so freeing and I just thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed having a more relaxed approach to food. I would say that my diet was balanced, but there was definitely still some niggling elements of diet culture kind of hanging around in the back of my head. So for example, some rules like you can't have bread for two meals in the day. Like it wasn't really a strict rule in my head, but if I did have bread for breakfast, I wouldn't really have it for lunch or dinner. Do you know what I mean? Or you can't just have a bowl of pasta without carbohydrates in it. So I wouldn't order like veg vegetarian pasta or something like that because there's no protein in that. So why would I order that? Every meal has to be protein, carbs and fats. That's kind of was drilled into my brain. Even though my diet was so much more relaxed, there was still these like small residual diet rules. Like, just in the back of my mind and playing into my daily choices that I hardly even recognized until a few years later. So I would say like 22, 23, moving to London, getting more relaxed, but still some remnants of diet culture remained. Then five years ago, age 24, I decided to go vegetarian. So that was when I started to eat a more plant focused diet for not only my health, but mainly for the planet and environmental reasons at the time. That was a very slow transition. So I started eating more plant-based, I don't know what month it was, maybe like February. And I was probably fully vegetarian by June. So it took quite a long time for me to get there. And then by that September, I went vegan. So it was like nine months from me being fully omnivorous to being a vegan by September. And I have to say that as I moved into that fully vegan lifestyle, I felt great. I'd say there wasn't really a massive difference in like my energy levels and my recovery from workouts. I'm very lucky that my body just seems to kind of adapt to whatever I'm eating. So I would say that when I was eating a vegan diet, I felt equally as fit, healthy and happy in my body and my energy levels as when I was eating an omnivorous, omnivorous diet. I cannot get that word out today. Omnivorous diet. I felt the same. There was no like huge energy surge or huge energy drop or no massive increase in performance or massive drop in performance. I just felt the same as I went between those two different diets. I would say that I stayed strict vegan for maybe 18 months to two years. And during that time, I really enjoyed eating a plant-based diet. It took time for me to learn how to cook all these new meals and learn how to fuel myself on a vegan diet because it's a challenge uh, when you first move to a vegan diet, when you've been omnivorous for the whole your whole life before that. You have to learn how to cook all these new meals, learn about protein substitutes, learn about like what you're going to eat as a vegan when you've never really even considered vegan an option before that. I used to look at the vegetarian options on the menu when I was younger and be like, who would order that? There's no protein in that. So <laughs> for me to then switch and be the person who was vegan, it was a big change in my mindset. It definitely took time for me to learn all of these new ways to cook and eat. I'd say that my time being fully vegan was overall enjoyable, but it wasn't a lifestyle that I felt in my mind I could continue doing forever, which is why you'll find out that next 
I changed my diet again. So in 2019, January 22nd, 2019, my bowel twisted. I was in the Maldives, I'll put a picture here, bing, of me and my massive scar and me recovering from the surgery. My bowel twisted when I was in the Maldives and as a result, I was in hospital for eight days, nine days, 10 days. I feel like I lost track of time during that time of my life. And then had to come home and recover for three months. It was a very intense time. My bowel twisted twice. They had to untwist it, stitch it to my abdomen, and then my bowel had to recover from that trauma. And during that recovery time, I couldn't eat high fiber foods. So during my recovery, I had a dietitian looking after me and she was like, you need to eat eggs. You need to eat some animal products during this time. Otherwise you're not gonna be able to get in the calories and protein that you need to recover from this situation. So during that time, I started eating eggs. So my, most of my meals were tofu, eggs, butternut squash, and wilted spinach. And that was like what I was eating during my recovery. Anything else would give me the bits. So that was when I started eating eggs again. And during that time, during my bowel surgery recovery, I think I just had a moment of realizing like, I don't think that I can keep up this fully vegan lifestyle for the rest of my life. I think I'm putting too much pressure on myself. I think I'm trying to push myself to live within these boundaries and these rules forever. And in reality, I don't think that's a lifestyle I wanna lead for the rest of my life. And in fact, I think I can still make a positive impact on the environment and also on my health and also on so many other things by just being plant focused, 100% vegetarian, but mostly plant based, you know? So yeah, in 2019, I transitioned from being fully vegan to being plant based forward slash vegetarian. And what that diet looks like is basically how I basically live my life now, which is at home, we have vegan food in our house. We don't really buy non-vegan food to come into our fridge and our store cupboards. We typically eat vegan meals like when we're at home, when we're cooking for ourselves. There might be some exceptions that like we might have some of my parents' eggs, etc. cetera, every so often, but the vast majority of the time, we're just cooking plant-based foods in our home. However, when we're out and about or when friends are cooking for us, when we're traveling, etc., we will happily eat the vegetarian option. And also we love baked goods, we love cinnamon rolls, we love croissants, and we wanna eat those and they are vegetarian. So I do definitely have more of like a vegan plant-based at home philosophy and then vegetarian when I'm out and about philosophy. And that is really, really, really working for me and working for Ant as well. And we're both kind of happy and thriving on that diet. And I feel really happy in that choice. I feel like this is a lifestyle that I can lead for the rest of my life. Like I can see myself eating this way forever. Whereas when I was on the fully vegan diet, I would think to myself, when is this gonna end? <laughs> like, when is this gonna end? I wanna be able to go out to a restaurant and order a sticky toffee pudding and not worry about the vanilla ice cream on it. Do you know what I mean? I just felt like that lifestyle, for me personally, I respect so many people who follow it fully, but for me personally, I felt like that didn't feel sustainable for the rest of my life and for my lifestyle long term. Whereas how I eat now, as I said, just feels like I could do this forever. I could easily do this forever. Eating plant-based at home, eating vegetarian when I'm out and about, that is just the perfect combination for me and it makes me feel so good. I just like to not feel limited. I like to feel like I have some options when I'm out there, especially when I'm traveling, because in some countries like, it's just so much easier to be vegetarian, just makes my life a lot more tasty and comfortable. So yeah, that is how I eat now. It's a very balanced approach to food. I haven't tracked my food in like six years. All of those food rules that I had in my early 20s about like you can't just eat a bowl of pasta without protein, you can't eat bread two times in a day. All those sorts of rules have dissipated. I feel like I have no food rules in my life. I just have this really balanced approach and relaxed approach to food that I'm so grateful for. I feel so lucky. I feel so lucky that I have such a relaxed approach to food. And I'm so grateful that I have the ability to be able to nourish my body with such a wide variety of wholesome food. And there definitely is a focus nowadays on the way that I eat that is whole foods plant-based. So I really try and make sure that every single day we're getting in more than our five a day of fruit and veg. We're getting in our nuts, our seeds, our grains, our legumes. Like I do focus consciously on getting in like plant-based protein, leafy greens, whole grains, legumes. As I said, all of that goodness, I try and get that in every single day. And I do consciously try and make healthy choices because my health matters to me. 
But as I said, there's no rules with my diet. There's no like strict restrictions or like things that I don't let myself eat. I mean like except steak, you know? <laughs> but yeah, I am conscious of my food intake. I'm conscious of trying to get in goodness and eat a balanced diet and making sure that I'm fueling my body appropriately and consciously and making sure I'm getting in the goodness that my body needs to feel its best because I feel such a tangible difference when I'm eating well. Like if I have a long weekend with friends and we go away and we're kind of just eating really heavy indulgent food not getting in all our veggies and goodness i do feel a bit sluggish after that whereas when i like come home cook all my own food get loads of goodness in nice balanced meals with carbohydrates proteins fats all that goodness i feel so light and energized and just ready to take on life so I definitely feel physical benefits with eating well. So I try and consciously get in all that good stuff, you know, but I'm just not strict about it. So yeah, I feel like I'm rambling, but basically that's where I am now. I am somebody who is pretty much just vegetarian, but mostly plant-based. So mostly choosing the vegan option when I can, but I don't ever want to put restrictions on myself. So I eat vegetarian food as well. And I feel like that is just a nice, delicious way to live and way to eat that I can sustain for the rest of my life. And obviously never say never. I never want to say that my diet's never going to change again because even in this span of like 18 to 29, 10 years, my diet has changed so much. So I have no idea how I'm gonna feel or how my life is gonna evolve and how that could impact my diet. But I, in my head right now, I feel like the way that I'm eating is a way that I can sustain for the long term. And I really hope that that is what I do. So I hope that this rambly chatty video has been interesting and insightful for you guys. If there's any lessons that you can take from this, I would say don't feel like you have to put yourself into a box. I really found it stressful when I put myself in the vegan box. And if there's one regret that I have in life, I mean, I have a few in my life, but one of them is putting myself in the vegan box, especially publicly online. I feel like it held me to a standard which I couldn't maintain. So I would just say, you don't have to be in a box. You can just say that you're like plant focused or trying to eat more plants or trying to eat less animal products. You don't have to say that you're vegetarian or vegan or plant-based or pescatarian or anything. You don't have to give yourself a label because putting a label on yourself makes other people put you in a box and then judge you for anything you do outside of that box. So you don't have to label yourself. Don't feel the need to do that. Eat in a way which makes you feel good and just eat in a way that you feel you can maintain long-term. Going for strict diets, going for crazy approaches, like for example, when I was trying to eat super low carb and keto, I could never maintain that diet for more than like a few days because I just felt so sluggish and lethargic and sleepy when I didn't eat any carbohydrates. And I have since learned that I'm a woman who thrives on carbohydrates and who thrives on a balanced diet. So don't put yourself in a box. Don't restrict yourself to the point of exhaustion and just hating what you eat. Food is something to be enjoyed. Food is not just fuel. Food is something which is social, which is cultural, which is delicious and enjoyable and something to be shared with friends, something you can make memories over with the people that you love. And I just feel like don't view food as the enemy. View food as something which is like a pleasure giver, something to enjoy and to share and to love and to treasure. Food is something which can be such an amazing part of your life. And I really hope that hearing my story of how I found my own personal balance can help you in some way. Maybe it can help you realize that like it takes time. I've been through so many different phases and diets over the course of my life. And I think it's normal to go through different phases. I just hope that all of us can find our own personal balance that works for us. And I hope that you can find the personal balance that works for you so if you did like this video it might have been a long one i hope you enjoyed it then please hit thumbs up please leave a comment down below please leave any requests for future videos i love doing chatty sit down videos so if you have any chatty sit down topics you want to hear me talk about let me know down below and i can film those for you and yeah hit subscribe hit like and i'll see you guys soon have a great day